Hello and welcome to this short clip looking at two gas collection techniques uh, so they can be compared and evaluated um, against each other. So we'll look at a familiar reaction which creates a volume of gas which can be measured and compared against the amount of gas predicted to be produced based on the uh, reactants themselves. So we're going to use this common reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid to produce carbon dioxide gas. We'll measure the carbon dioxide gas given off but first we'll predict how much of it we expect to find. So if we first of all look at the mole ratio, we can see that we've got a 1 to 2 mole ratio of react the reactants with 2 moles of HCl requiring 1 mole of CaCO3 for a complete reaction. And in amongst your products you've got 1 mole of carbon dioxide. So I start by weighing out uh, 0 0.5 grams of calcium carbonate. So I zero my my weighing bolt. I just have to add my calcium carbonate to the weighing bolt. I'm aiming to be as, as careful and precise as possible here, not spilling any. I'm carefully tipping it in bit by bit until we get to 0 0.5. So I know that the moles of calcium carbonate will be mass over molar mass, which is 0 0.5 grams over 100.1 grams per mole to the minus 1, which equals 0 0.004995 moles. So this now allows, uh, now allows me to predict uh, how many moles of HCl I need, and therefore how many moles of carbon dioxide I'd expect to make. So I need to use uh, 20 centimetres cubed of uh, HCl because that's a good balance between enough acid to make the reaction uh, go to completion uh, but also not so much that I'm putting myself in danger. So using a pipette small amounts at a time makes it nice and manageable and easy to use. And also minimizes the risk. So I end up with 0 0.02 moles. So let's compare that against what we need. So because I've got 0 0.02 moles of HCl, I have well enough to actually completely react with uh, 0 0.004995 moles. That means the HCl is in excess. That means all of the calcium carbonate should react completely. So that means I should get 0 0.004995 moles of CO2 gas. So if we use V equals 24,000N, we can then work out how many centimetres cubed of carbon dioxide we're expecting to get. So that should mean we are expecting 119.88 centimetres cubed of carbon dioxide gas. So let's now do this reaction using two separate techniques to see if we can work out which one is more effective. So the measurement of uh, CaCO3 earlier, the 0 0.5 grams, I did that twice. So I've actually got two um, weighing boats with exactly 0 0.5 uh, grams of calcium carbonate in them. And one is going to be used for one gas, uh, gas collection technique, the other one is going to be used for the other. So this first technique is called collecting the gas over water. So we have a conical flask as our reaction vessel. We also have rubber tubing fed under water to 250 centimetres cubed measuring cylinder. And the measuring cylinder is full of water with the end under the water of the, um, that's contained within the, the plastic tray. So the inverted measuring cylinder filled with water should collect any gas produced. So let's now do the reaction and we can see what happens. So 
So I take off the bung, obviously to get access. And I'm going to put, tip my calcium carbonate fully into the reaction vessel. Calcium carbonate build in first, and just to see that it's, it's all gone. So I'm going to pour the acid in, and with my left hand have the bung ready so I can seal the top as quickly as possible. So I'm going to give it a shake just to see how much we can get. You can see it going down to almost 50. I've already calculated in the amounts that I've put in that I'm going to have more acid than I need. You can see from the moles that all of the calcium carbonate should be used up. So you can see the reaction is starting to slow down now, but we've got nowhere near 119.88 centimetres cubed. So holding against a black background, you can see it's clear. It must mean that all the calcium carbonate is gone. But there's only 48 centimetres cubed of gas produced. So where might the gas have escaped to? The reaction has gone to completion because you can see clearly there's no calcium carbonate left. So there's some gas lost before the bung is put on. You can see there was a time lag of a half a second or so. Now carbon dioxide is actually slightly soluble in water, so some of it might have dissolved as it passes through the water. It's also possible that some gas might still be inside the flask and didn't make it into the measuring cylinder. So, maybe this isn't the best technique to do the job with. Let's try another one. So the other technique we could try is using a gas syringe. This doesn't involve passing a gas through water, and the gas syringe is a much more precise piece of equipment than a measuring cylinder. And no prizes for guessing that it's called a gas syringe because it's designed for the job. So let's have a look at how this one works. So again you can see my sample of calcium carbonate. It was 0 0.5 grams exactly again. And against the black background you can see that the acid was measured to 20 centimetres cubed again. Exactly the same acid, 1 mole per decimeter to the minus 3. So again I'm going to put my sample into the flask. Tapping it to make sure as much goes in as possible. So you can see it's empty. So you can see it's in there. Pop it on a dark surface so you can see clearly the white powder. And again, pop the acid in quickly, replace the bung, and you can see the gas syringe start to move. So obviously, the pressure of the gas is pushing the gas into the gas syringe. Shaking the, the flask as much as I can to encourage as much gas as possible to find its way into the gas syringe. So you can see that even now there's slight sort of jerky movements that show it's picking up a little bit of extra gas. So it's much more sensitive, this piece of equipment. So I don't know if you can see in the background when I get my hand out of the way. So just before we do that, checking it's gone clear to make sure all of the calcium carbonate is dissolved and reacted. So you can see it's gone a bit closer to 60 if you squint your eyes a bit. So this time we've got 54 centimetres cubed of gas, which is an improvement on 48 centimetres cubed, which I had before, but still nowhere near the amount we expected. So there's still some gas escaping during replacement of the bung. I deliberately didn't rinse my weighing boat, so some solid may be left unreacted. That might not account for the significant 
um, lower volume that we're looking at. So even though there's a slight improvement here, it's still possible, or probably even, that most of the missing gas is either escaped into the atmosphere or is still in the flask and tubing hasn't been picked up by the gas syringe yet. So there is actually a method that's an improvement on this one. So if your gas is produced in a sealed container, and you know the temperature, and you can use atmospheric pressure, you can use another um, technique called PV equals NOT. This is the ideal gas equation, which I've covered in a separate clip. There's the gas syringe method. It's quite accurate, but may not collect all the gas. And then you've got collection over water, unsuitable for soluble gases. So you need to choose your collection method according to the properties of the gas you wish to measure. So what they'll ask you to think about is, could you predict what affects any procedural errors, so mistakes in other words, or technique issues, in other words, one technique being more accurate than another, might have on your calculated value for moles of gas produced. So the calculated value could go up as well as down, depending on what actually happens. It's worth maybe having a think about some of this. But in the meantime, thank you for listening. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of an insight into the different ways we collect gases. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to apply it to some of the exam questions you might want to try out. So until next time, thanks a lot and see you soon.